understand, understanding, even down to who was the producer at the, at the publisher that was handling that product, and um, you know who was really working on it. So it's it's not just a game ranking. A good publisher will look at absolutely everything and take that into consideration. Um, again, willingness to build a partnership, and then technology is, of course, can you do it? Can you deliver what you're promising? Well, one of the things that, that, that we recognize, and, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, so I can know that, you know, there's times when, when developers are put into a position where there's a movie coming out, I got short money, no time, make this game, and those guys never really get a chance to sit back and say, you know what, I got 24 months and I got enough money for to make a great game. And I look for groups like that, that have that talent, that have the ability, that have the engine, but have never really had the, the chance to step out and do it. You know, that's, they've never had the chance to sit back and go, okay, we're going to take five, six months and just design this out and prototype everything and look at it. And there's a lot of groups out there that are just waiting for someone to come along. And a good concept, a good technology, you know, I we look really closely at that. Not everyone does, but we certainly do. And then, of course, the game, the opportunity. So... The genre and the platform, um, the historical performance of life titles. As Brian mentioned, probably an original children's title that's on 360 is probably going to be very difficult to get in just because uh, the, uh, the historical demographics of the Microsoft platforms, although they're doing a very, very great job with Arcade and trying to expand the demographic of that platform, um, the difficulty in uh, marketing a new original IP to children um, you have, you have like the noise of Nickelodeon and Pixar. We have to fight that in those big, huge marketing machines. Um, so there's, it, it really is, you know, the genre, the platform, the target demographic, all of that comes into play. It doesn't make sense. So if you're if you're doing um, a Wii title and you have this amazing M-rated game for Wii, it's, it, we're not at all saying we won't consider it, but you have to understand that. Historically, I'm writing titles, you know, with the exception of like the Resident Evil and maybe a couple other ones. Um, it traditionally has not worked, so we'll just take a closer look at it. We'll be able to look at more scrutiny. Things that are, are obvious, something that is um, a very broad puzzle game, and we not be aware of that. Makes sense. You know, they, so you have to take all that into consideration. Um, again, the marketplace, that brings books. And then the business model. And business all of us work. There are a lot of great ideas and great licenses that will, that will never be made in games because it just doesn't make financial sense, unfortunately. But sometimes you can take that idea, the core idea, make it a little smaller, not make it a huge game of it, and find a way to make your budget go down so that you can keep the integrity of the game and triple A game. I mean, it's not so important to make a 25-hour game anymore, or a 30-hour game. You know, you can make an eight-hour game. People, I would rather make an eight-hour game and someone go, why the hell did they stop? You know, so they're going to buy the sequel. Rather than make a 12-hour game and go, damn, it was boring. You know, I mean, it happens. Most games are never finished. So, I'm all into, give me a great, eight hour, 10 hour experience and let them ask for more. And if we can cut our budgets by doing that, then that's what we do. So that we can actually make the game, which is what we're all here to do. Or consider another platform. I mean, maybe it's something that you envision being on 360, but it might work for the library. Or it, it might have been something that you envision to be, you know, 360 PlayStation 3, but now that you think about it, you get the feedback you get from the sure maybe it, it makes it we in the S-Tops. So just keep your mind open. Those are two different suggestions. I mean, it seems great on the gamma. I don't really think about it. I just said, I saw it here. A lot of highs and 
something that's sold that was presentable as a as a unique um, a unique element to, to, to go into the market with? I think that um, you know Brian has Brian and I have had a lot of conversations about just making the game a full piece of entertainment. That it's something where when you get something and you sit through a movie that you don't necessarily get when you sit through a commercial or a playing game. So how do you make that game a total piece of entertainment? And that's something that we're very, very interested in. And I think the whole industry is moving in that direction. But unfortunately, I don't think that from a marketing perspective, that's enough. I mean, it's a good thing to have, but if you have, you know, I'm going to um, just develop this character and make, make people care about it and absolutely yeah. love it and I'm going to want to finish the game. From a market perspective, they're going to want to know what the features are that set it apart, what, you know, the, the multiplayer aspect that's going to do something. That is very important, and I don't think that they dismiss it. I just think that they're they're really intent on showing from a gameplay perspective how the, the game is. So you say you, you, you take the kinds of sort of edge out of difference. You take it so much of money. You know, the end of June was the next thing that was going to be. You push the margin and stuff. Things that things that are just going to make that game more playable and more desirable. I don't think it needs to be earth shattering. I think no, it's just, you know what? I think we've made every game that's ever going to be made. I really do. But yet, you still have you know, some sort of Pretty cool. <laughs> Name something that, we, that hasn't been done. I mean, we've made all the shooters, we've done adventure, we've done, we've done dive for a group. It's been done though, right? Yeah. It just hasn't been done properly. <laughs> <laughs> I think what Brian's saying is that, you know, if you watch a movie, there's like five or six different kinds of movies. They've all been told in, in various different ways, and you can tell a, a bad dramatic film from a good dramatic film and what makes a difference. Because they're both trying to tell the first exact same story. They're trying to tell you the exact same story, but what makes a good film versus a, a drama that you can go see and say, oh, I want that two hours back. So, so, so I think mean, what, what you're looking for is kind of a mix yes. of things that are really going to have some potential. Because there's a, you know, it has to have a hook. It has to have something presented different or seemingly different than a previous game. It's going to be some sort of Yeah, I think it's kind of hard. See, that's why I always feel attacked by this subject. <laughs> because this is probably the hardest thing. It would be like if we could all sit down, you know, and, and just start talking about books. You know, I mean, it's fun to do. But, so what is the hook in a first person shooter? For me, the hook would be if someone could actually create AI that works. That doesn't just stand up and say, shoot me. Now to me, that's a hook. You know, if, if I can tell you a story without you knowing I'm telling you a story, without interrupting gameplay with a bunch of movies, to me that's a hook. To marketing, that may not be a hook. To marketing, a hook is everything in the environment is destructive. You know, uh, it's kind of funny. We did a game that, that when I was at D3, we called Earth Defense Force. You know, and it, it's, it's an incredibly bad game, in my opinion. But the press gave it 90s. And the reason they did was because you went in, it was a no-brainer, you picked up the controllers, you ran through, you killed these huge ants, and everything in the environment was destroyed. And the guy was running that far off the ground. <laughs> and they gave it 90s. They had like over, what? 150 and guns. The only way they're different, the different um, settings, the only way you could beat it on ridiculous is if you played co op. So it was something that the gaming press was like, this is just great gameplay. Yeah, so, it doesn't you know, look good. What's the hook? I looked at that game and I went, what's the hook? It's easy, it's a no brainer. That's the hook. You know, it's pick up and play, and you need a five minute fix, and you pick it up, you run through, kill everything, put it down, and then you. Go eat dinner. You know, I don't know what 